welcome to this edition of Sea Trade Maritime Masterclass. My name is Emma Howe, Director at Sea Trade Maritime. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing one of the busiest ladies in shipping. So, with no further ado, let me introduce you to Gina Panayotu, ESG Manager, West of England Insurance Services. Now, I know you grew up in Cyprus. You studied law in the UK, where you also did your master's in maritime law. And then after being called to the bar in Cyprus, did your MBA, which had a focus on sustainable businesses via change management and ethical leadership. So what led to your interest and study in maritime? Thank you so much, uh, Emma, for hosting me on this uh, masterclass. First of all, I'm very excited to be here. And your introduction definitely made me smile. Coming on to your first question and interest in studying maritime, I think this might not come as a surprise. So it was a bit by chance. I was looking for an interesting subject to do as a master's degree. Everybody was doing business at the time. And a visionary friend of my dad said, you know, Cyprus is an up-and-coming maritime hub look into that. So I think somewhere between international trade and laws of the seas and being such an ocean lover, it just, I looked into it and never looked back. And what keeps you passionate about the industry? I think it does come back to what brought me into it. So the international element and the fact that it's so closely related to the ocean, but there is one more thing. And I think I was very blessed to have joined the industry from a ship owner. So I, I went into a ship owning organization to lead the legal department. And it put things into perspective. The first time I saw this interactive map of where all the vessels were and what they were carrying. So it makes you realize that there's this global purpose. You're serving an industry that is so crucial to the world and life as we know it every day. So that's what keeps me passionate about it. So Gina, you've held senior roles mainly within ship owning organizations and founded your consultancy firm, Oceans Arena, aimed at supporting industry stakeholders with practical ESG strategies, covering the whole scope of formulation, implementation, compliance and brand positioning, while you currently lead the ESG strategy at West of England P&I. What made you decide to start your own consultancy? So starting my own consultancy came along during COVID, at the beginning, more or less, of COVID. And it was an interesting time for the industry. And I've always felt that there were these two gaps. The one was in understanding and embracing ESG as an opportunity to be more as an industry. And the second one is we were not telling our story right. And that was very also clear from the seafarer food change crisis, mm. obviously. Um, so with Oceans Arena, what I wanted to do is bring those two together. And while sh- shipping companies and stakeholders are busy running ships, I wanted to facilitate that journey of utilizing this ESG strategy to the best extent possible and getting that brand position in right, because it's one thing doing the right thing, but also being able to inspire and influence in the right direction. So that's what brought about the Oceans Arena venture for me. So let's go back to your, to your day job. What is your focus and ambition as ESG manager at West of England PI? So our focus and ambition at West of England, I think PI clubs have a very important role to play as a stakeholder in this industry. So the one thing we want to be doing, of course, is Um, Internally, we want to be better for our people, better for our stakeholders and communities that we influence. And that's one part of the job. And the other part and our our ambition at West is also um, to be the best support possible for our members and be able to cover the risk of this uncharted waters and allow them to confidently navigate through this process and utilize it to the best extent possible. So how do you support industry stakeholders with ESG and and why does it matter? I'll do the second part first on why ESG matters and why ESG matters generally is one thing. So obviously all organisations making a positive impact, I think that's quite evident why it's important. We're going through a new age of new increased environmental regulations new shareholders, new generations coming in that have other uh, priorities on their agenda, new era of charters even. 
Uh, so it's quite important if we want to sustain this industry and sustain it sustainably mm. to be uh, looking into ESG and doing it, getting it right. And when it comes to why ESG matters for a PNI perspective, as I mentioned, this era is very an uncertain time for everybody, and it's it calls for stepping out of that comfort zone. And whenever you step out of a comfort zone, there's a risk there, right? Always. So from a PNI perspective, there's a very important role to play in being able to safeguard against that risk and providing the best resources possible to manage uh, the situation if something goes wrong or proactively guide your members. So that's kind of what we do in respect to how we guide our stakeholders. It's being there for them, providing the assurance, the confidence they need, proactively advising them on what's the best way forward. So that's mainly how we're formulating our strategy. So now based in London, Gina has also acted as a communications consultant at the IMO UNEP Norway Innovation Forum and is the UK chair of the G100 Network Sustainable Brand Creation and Marketing, the Secretary of Worcester UK and represents the UK on the Worcester International Environment Committee. She sits on BIMCO's ESG network and also supports the World Ocean Council as an associate on law and ocean sustainable development and is an associate tutor at MLA College. Gina, are you some kind of superwoman? I mean, how do you juggle your day job with all of these activities? That does sound a lot, and uh, I, I do love this question. I come back to why. The thing is, I don't really differentiate the two. Like, you would never hear me say I have a day job and I have lots of other activities. Because for me, what I do, especially now, I mean, it's there's a unified purpose in everything. And I can't, you know, be the ESG manager at West and advocate for gender equality and then at 5.30 or whatever time you're supposed to leave the office, switch off and be somebody else. So, you know, whether I'm at a WISTA committee meeting or um, talking to students at university, uh, mentoring females, it's all part of that growth mindset and doing you better, I guess, so you can perform even better. So I think, you know, if you're not really invested yourself, you can't really be invested in anything. So they probably how I don't even realise that it's a lot of stuff because they all come together as one. I mean, what a great answer, but it kind of leads to also, do you have any hobbies? Hobbies? Well, I do box a little and yeah, that's something I do enjoy quite a lot. And then I write, I read a lot. So those kind of things really help me, I guess, unwind sometimes when it is a bit overwhelming. (laughs) Which I can imagine it, it sometimes is. To add some further credits to her name, Gina has been featured amongst the top maritime influences you should know, or should follow, I should say, by Marine Traffic, shortlisted for the Inspirational Influencer Awards in the Global Impact category for her work on youth and female empowerment. Being ranked by Legal 500, GC Powerlist Greece and Cyprus as one of the top 100 in-house council driving innovation within their sector. So Gina, my next question is, what has driven you and what advice would you give to women entering this still, sadly, male-dominated industry? Sadly, as you mentioned in 2023, So first part of the question, what drives me, I think is probably recurrent in most of my answers. I feel this, um, we're serving this this industry that connects the world. It's a purpose for me. So that's what drives me. On the advice for women entering the sector, and I really can't say this enough, is really know your worth and be your authentic self. The value that you give yourself really reflects on how people will interact with you and it's very important. It's also, you know, a bit of trial and error. So another important piece of advice that I want to, or I always try and give women in the industry is join associations like WISTA, attend events like Sea Trade. They're the, your, the best experience, the best exposure you can have to uh, making your, your way in this industry. What about mentoring? Would you encourage other women to to mentor people coming into the industry? 
Yeah. That's something that uh, that I actually do, and I do part of it as a volunteer basis also with special students who are coming into, female students coming into the industry. I think mentoring is so important because we need to be able to voice our ambitions, where we want to go, and have somebody that can tell us. Firstly, it's not a disease to be ambitious. Uh, you can voice <laughs> that and say that. Yes, because I felt that way, unfortunately, have been made to feel that way a few times. So uh, being able to talk to somebody who's going to tell you, you know, it's okay. Yes, that's where you want to go. You want to be a director in five years. That's fine. And also help you through that process, uh, help you stay motivated because it's it's not easy with the way our upbringings, what society expects of us, what we expect of ourselves. So it's very important. And actually, I'm very happy that one of the things we've done at West, we've recently just launched our internal mentorship program. It's for our employees, which I think is even more fantastic, but it's definitely going to help those women voice their their ambitions and aspirations within the organisation and get the support they need. And obviously you've been recognised for so many accolades and that's truly inspirational for other women in the industry. What's next on your agenda? It is always beautiful to see when people come up to me and say, you know, we saw you there and this is inspirational. So I think that's something that's important to me. What comes next? The answer is going to surprise you, but I, I never plan. I never set goals. I never set targets. I just keep doing what I enjoy, what I'm passionate about. So um, I don't know what will come next, but I definitely can tell you that I'll just continue doing what I can to make a positive impact and support the younger generation coming into the industry, the women coming into the industry. So I know I'm not answering your question, but I really (laughs) don't know what comes next. I think you've answered that quite succinctly, actually. Um, You have been featured in the top 100 women in shipping list for four consecutive years. And as mentioned, you are passionate about female empowerment. That kind of leads me on to the next question, and that is what more can this industry and the industry at large do to include women at leadership levels in particular? As speakers on industry panels and bridge the pay gaps, and I recognise there's quite a lot of uh, questions within that, but if you could address that, that would be very interesting. I think the way you formulated this question highlights how much we still have to be doing Mm. for women of this industry, unfortunately. One of the things, it comes back to what you asked about mentoring, empowering women to feel that it's safe for them to voice who they want to be, what they want to be, and creating those communication streams within an organisation when they can't do that. So that's more on the business side and what business can be doing because I get asked a lot should we just be going out and actively hiring women to fix the gender balance and um, that's not really how it works you need to facilitate that culture within your organization that's going to lead to those women rising to the positions that they want to be deserve to be etc because I'm also not a fan of positive discrimination Mm. It, it should be down to merit but you need to have that communication streams within the organization that allow and facilitate this gender pay gap I think you need to be taking drastic action it's not going to change by itself you need to set targets you need to assess where you are so it's something that all organizations whether they're required so by law or not should be doing that's always a great debate because I know the challenge conference organizers face when they want to find women to talk on panels, not because they're not available, but they might not be in the right position or the company that the sponsor won't send a woman to the conference. So it comes back to the organization, I feel. Yes, the organizers should be proactive and try and locate these women, but organizations need to be very conscious that we should be giving equal opportunities to the women in our organization and bring them on the stage rather than keep them in the offices and send the usual faces. I would agree with that and I would also add and equip those women with the skills to be able to be on those speaker panels as well because quite often and speaking for a conference organisation 
women decline because they've not been trained and have the confidence to take that role. A hundred percent. And I mean, at Wister, that's something that we're actively looking into and you might have come across. Now we'll be, Wister International is doing some training on presentation skills for its members, but organizations also need to step up and be doing that within their organizations also. Why are we still lagging behind as an industry? We're lagging behind I feel on the one part because there's not enough role models, but what you're doing with Sea Trade and this ambassador scheme is quite important because you're bringing role models, especially female role models and younger role models and maybe new faces to, to the, the forefront, which is crucial in why we're lagging behind. Because if women can't see what they can be, it's a bit more difficult. And then it's about, I think, from my experience, it's not always the intent, but a lack of understanding. Because I talk with a lot of male executives on this topic and numerous times, and genuinely, they want to support. They come to me and say, you know, I have my daughters, and I would never want to believe that I'm doing something that would be detrimental to their career progression. But it's uh, just raising the awareness. How can we do it? Uh, what's the most practical approach, the realistic approach for the industry? So things like this are what, what are keeping us behind. You also host a broadcast called Ocean's Arena Stage, which is committed to branding the industry that makes the world go round. Tell us a little bit more about that. Ocean's Arena Stage started as just an idea and a radio show back in Cyprus at a community station that belonged to university. Because I had entered the industry in 2014, and anybody I talked to outside the industry, especially students, had no idea what, what we do. And so I thought, you know, we need to change that. We need to be attracting talent and getting those stories out. So I started interviewing people in fireside chats, some panels where we would cover topics that were relevant to the industry, but the main focus was for these people of the industry to share what does it take as a person to be in shipping? Uh, who do you need to be? Uh, what does it offer? So that's that's how Oceans Are In A Stage came to life. And let's talk about your joining the Sea Trade Maritime Club, which is committed to bringing together the shipping industry on the global platform at Sea Trade Maritime Industry events. I think the conversation we've had almost self answers this, but. In your words, what can you bring to the table and what would you like to add to the international agenda moving ahead? Firstly, I need to say I'm very excited and very grateful to both you, Emma and Karen, of course, for leading this initiative. It's much needed in the industry. And as I mentioned earlier, it's shaping those role models of the industry to make it better. In respect to what I bring to the table, I think probably a diverse perspective, but also uh, the ESG part of it. I think ESG and in all of its levels, including gender uh, equality, uh, is something that's not well understood or probably understood from a different perspective. And I think having that commercial understanding of the industry and how ESG can be an opportunity is something important to put forward and add it to that international agenda and make our industry just more uh, resilient and sustainable. Gina, thank you for your time today. I think that anybody listening back to this will be fascinated by what you've achieved and we look forward to seeing what happens next. Thank you so much, Emma, and thank you to Sea Trade for this fantastic opportunity. You've been listening to Sea Trade Maritime Masterclass. My name is Emma Howe, Director at Sea Trade Maritime, and I've been talking to Gina Panayatu, ESG Manager at West of England Insurance Services. It's made for a great podcast, and I encourage you to listen. Thank you. Bye bye.